this is the two side pieces um, I hope in that video is showing alright because I'm very close with it I just hope it's in focus um, I'm going to face off this side and the other side the two sides on the jaws are um, as they come off the flat bar they don't seem bad and it seems to be gripping both pieces ok I have nipped it up quite tight I'm just going to take a little skim off them together. I rely on me. get these wrong I've engraved number one number two they'll stay on forever because um, as the drawing shows that would be number one like that and that's number two like that so they actually will come together like that so you'll never see the engraved marks but I'll always know what I'm doing so I know that's number one from this side it needs drilling and countersinking 
and it needs the through ream bar there and there and the brass bush is pressing in and then on number two which is his partner again brass no I'm wrong they don't have brass bushes the bottom ones just that pin there that don't have any bushes so that's just a, a quarter ream through there and there uh, but this, these two do have the bushes three eighths reamed but I found the reamers aren't much good the ones I've I got to loan to me they're, they're pretty much worn out uh, I have got a full set of metric ones there but these are imperial unfortunately uh, I'm finding that um, um, old Clarkson milling cutters that well they're like brand new but they're very old and they're all in imperial and they seem to be uh, pretty accurate uh, so far I've done those bushes there with them and I've been quite lucky yeah so that's what I'm on with this uh, has to be drilled drilled to hold the thing together then it has to be milled out which is for these two slides here that make an arrangement that adjusts it up and down and that's its counterpart number two so that's what I'm on with uh, I've either got to drill them first or do that mill slot I'll probably do the mill slot first well I've made uh, an executive decision how's that uh, having squared these sides up and marking them up one and two I need to uh, mill the cheap piece out on each one um, but it's half the distance of this there's, there's uh, 3 sixteens it's 3 eighths plate and it's 3 sixteens to mill out uh, along here if I jack that up and stand it on some parallels uh, 3 sixteens plus so I don't hit the jaws that's not got, giving me a lot of purchase on the uh, the item and I'm going to be using if you can see this cutter um, which cause you can cause quite a bit of vibration as you're using it I, I don't think it's a good idea I was going to do these plain and do the drilling afterwards but what I've decided to do is to clamp them together as per the drawing drill all the holes which will be one two three four I believe four holes uh, top and bottom pivot for the arms and two that actually fix this thing together like so with sandwich in between so if I had a 9.5 millimetre drill that's 9.5 if I run that through I might then get the reamer through Starts again. Well, that up on the right. This is a brand new Garma. Don't have any problems with that. Yeah. I suppose I 
better give that a go. I'll knock off to set this light up. It's not running through, it's a bit. That's going to go in, that is going to go, it's slightly tighter this side so that's great because I can push it in from that side, but I'm sure they lock tight it in anyway, so they don't uh, turn. Right, so that's the uh, result, that one's done, and that one's done. So all I've got to do now is separate these two pieces of steel, but you can't see it. Um, because uh, that hole and that hole need clearance and uh, they also need to be well the bolts that came with the kit and this little bag and there uh, those allen screws countersunk and I think it says 12mm so obviously the top ones want clearance bottom ones tapped and we'll get on with that and then we've got to mill the slots, but I'm going to bolt them together, which will give me, a, uh, as I said earlier, uh, and then the edges to radius, which I'm not sure whether we're going to do that on a, a rotary table, which I'll, I'll take this off and put the rotary table on, but that'll probably another part. Okay. Right, that's... Uh, the hole's finished with so that's me two uh, pins uh, and these are the two clearance six mil and countersunk for the allen screws by uh, 12 mil they just need tapping m6 and then i'm happy that i can bolt them together in a fashion but but be careful because they don't want bolting together like that they're going to want to be back to back somehow because I've got a miller slot let's get this right a three quarter inch slot down there three sixteen steep and one down there so the two slots match so if I'm going to bolt them together I'm going to rely on them holes being right because I did them on DRO which yeah I can bolt them back together again just to give one the support for the other that's all I need it for just so that I've got more grip in here so I'm happy with it
that's the number one tap. Um, it might suffice because um, it's gone the whole way through. You can just feel a right little bit of a lip there, but it it don't matter. That's fine. So I think I can do all my machining now just by them two being bolted together and I could machine my radiuses and them both together and I can machine my slot in there and my slot in there which I'm sure we're 316 deep it's the slot is the slot is 15 16 of an inch long so that's along there and I'm sure it's somewhere it tells you there look 3 16 so it's 3 8 material so it's 3 16 so it's half of each piece of material so it's quite simple isn't it slot and slot and using that running backwards and forwards it shouldn't take too long to do so that's pretty much set up to uh, to cut these slots uh, for anybody that's interested that's not into particularly swapping in pearl and metric uh, the depth of cut we're going is classed as 3 sixteenths of an inch on the drawing which is 0.1875 thousandth of an inch so it's uh, 18.75 and that comes out at 4.762 millimetres I'm not doing it in metric, I'm doing it in pearl so I need 18.75 deep cut and I'm going to paste that on there I've actually changed my mind um, I'm not going to do it imperial I'm going to do it metric it's, it's probably easier on that DRO scale because the if I go to imperial it's point not, 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 not it's five knots point after the point it's up to five knots this way it's uh, smaller increments only three decimal places four seven six two that'll do me i'll double check that though three six needs on the chart i'm going to show this chart because there's been a little bit on engineering forum recently um a chap put a, a link on and i got this given some time ago from a friend who got a, a stack of them and he gave me one which I was really chuffed about and it's got uh, conversion charts and then we go from 0.3 of a millimetre tells you in thou and then you've got your fractions as it comes down and it goes on and on and on and ends up at six inches yeah six inches 152.4 millimeters so it's quite a good chart and it's got all the fractions as it goes every time you hit a fraction it shows it so what are we looking for uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch 5 sixteenths quarter 3 sixteenths of an inch so that's 1875.1875 of an inch in thous, 4.762 millimetres, which is what I've got. And another chart there as well that I've got. Metric thread extended thread range size. I've never used that, it's for um, threads, metric. Uh, not shown them this much. This this is the DRO that we'll be using. My Z, I've just scratched off onto the face of the work on the Z, which is up, and then we'll dial in how much we're going to cut at a time. It'll only be very very um, small increments, probably a quarter of a mil to start. We maybe go up to half, but I don't take big chops at a time. Uh, X is irrelevant really. I'm just. Zero that back, it doesn't mean anything. 
quite a good DRO though. It's an M DRO, British. Well, a British sold one. I don't think it was probably made here, but they marketed here. Um, but it's got a lot of the nice features on it. The PCD is brilliant. I, d I did use that just to try it out, and it's really good. So you can tell it how many holes, if you want to drill seven holes, you just tell it. Um, and it, it, you tell it diameter that you want, uh, and it, it comes up and gives you all the figures. Also got a built-in calculator. They all have, I mean, it's no different to any of the others. It's just nice, nice thing. If you're going to do your half, so if you wanted to find the centre of a piece of work and you did half, you've got your half function there. You don't press the X, the Y or Z. So if you were doing, say, Y, and you wanted to find the centre of a piece of work and you were using your finder, um, you would press this Y half, not that. If you did that, you'd just zero that again. It says on look zero. So you so if you want if you found, you know, it were twenty-four millimeters from one side to the other, which is gonna be a twelve for the centre, you just press Y half and it'd come up with twelve. And then you you know you where your centre is really good. Really good. So I'll bob this little camera back in, I'll just take a scratch fast because um, I'm gonna use power feed. Um, and I don't want to uh, anything to go wrong, so I'm going to take a, a hand feed pass first, just to try it out. What are we going to run at? I'm gonna try about 700 to start. With. side to do now. Um, I'm not 100% satisfied to be honest with you. It was very noisy and it's quite it, The last time I used that was a lot better than that. Uh, I'm wondering if maybe it's a bit blunt some of those teeth because I did use that for cutting some tool holders down and they were flipping hard there's a case hardening on them that didn't have to take some getting through so it could be that they just want replacing and I have got some of those inserts so tomorrow I'm going to do this side but I'm going to do something different I'm going to instead of using that 650mm insert unit I've got another one so look um, I've got a few but I've got that one, but th th that's an import one, and albeit it ain't bad, it, it doesn't have spark if you've seen one of my other videos. But I've got this one, and I believe that's an ISCA. No, it's not, it's a wide axe. And I should imagine it wasn't cheap when it was new, and that has got some good teeth in it. So, <laughs> more than I have. Uh, what I'm thinking is putting that one in tomorrow and having a go with that one. Is that a little chip on that one? Maybe turn that one, well, maybe turn them all around. That's chips as well. Or is it just maybe worn a little bit? I might turn all them round so they're fresh. And we'll do it the other side. It's a bit big, you see, for such a small little job. You really don't want out that big. But it's, it's either those or I go back to using a what's biggest I've got? Twelve. I've got some twelve mil carbide um mills, milling cutters, which you could do them in twelve, twenty-four, thirty-six. What have we got there? When I got twenty-five, twelve, twenty-four. I could nearly do that in two passes. 
Tell you what, let's let's tomorrow I'm gonna do the other side. I'm not gonna use them and we'll try it with a, a new twelve mil carbide bit. And see that. with a piece of glass to show through that but uh, it throws chips lots of chips to get me level here I've got a parallel in here then another parallel in the back that's a different because it's already stepped now is one side of this. So uh, I've got a feeler gauge in there to, to get it level and I use my level box. Quite a good little box actually, reasonably accurate. So I'm going to take in very shallow cuts. I'm taking 4.7 millimeters deep, but uh, I'm going to get it. I'm taking 4.7 millimetres deep but only shallow cuts across about 2 millimetres at a time I mean it's cutting through like butter I should do it's a new bit and it's only mild steel I'm cutting right so That's two halves done that are still bolted together. <coughs> see that that was done with a, a 10 mil cutter. And you can see the marks, but you, you can hardly feel them, but they're there. And then that side, which don't look very nice at all, was done with a face cutter. I do suspect the bits were blunt. On that there must have been because it normally finishes like chrome so that uh, that's been deburred but this side just needs touching up all the way around uh, so that's as far as we've got I'm not going to unbolt these two though um, because I've got to start thinking about the radius on them now and I believe once the radius is a cut it's complete apart from uh, those two bolts are to hold the thing together with that in between but then there's um, a tool holder block to fit and it goes oh, I can't show you because I've got these wrong way around I imagine that's this outside but it's not um, we'd have that to go on because these threads won't come through They'll, they'll finish just below and then that goes on but obviously you, you don't use those two holes it shows two further down on the drawing so these are the two M6's that are in now and then it shows just below and to one side two more holes drilled and tapped and which is to fix that block Suppose we'd use countersunk screws and screw them in that way. That's as far as we've got so far. We're doing okay. So I'll move on to the next job. I'm probably going to have to set a rotary table up for this. It's just a little bit of an aside. Um, for those of you that might watch this that haven't got a milling machine. Um, if you're thinking about getting one, I'd say get one. They're fantastic. Once you've got one, you'd wonder how you manage without it making gadgets. Uh, but look at this lot every time you use it it's everywhere it's all over the floor um, and on the other way would be a complete guard around it that you could swing around and a lot of them do come with a complete guard 
but the problem is it sometimes interferes with what you're doing so you don't always sort of have the guard on um, I only did the work this side this time so that I could show it on the film um, had it not been for showing it on film I'd have had it the other way and all these little chips would have flicked off down there um, and I could have put a barrier over there and just it have all dropped down onto the tray so just remember if you're going to get a milling machine you must have a vacuum cleaner so that's my next job is to vac all this up before I carry on right I've just made a, a dummy just a short piece of MT2 I put a threading end just in case it jams so I could get it back out again so that will go down there look below surface so all I've got to do now is I can just make little dowels whatever I want I can fit anything to that now any size or diameter that I want to get my centre I don't want to press it in too hard because I'll have to rag it to get it back out uh, but yeah uh, it, it fits fine so um, I can start and work out now how I'm going to do my radiuses. The radiuses are so small that when I'm rotating that, obviously I only want right short radiuses. I'm not sure if it says something like 5 sixteenths of an inch, but it's not much. Uh, so it's a nice little addition. It's Even though I've made it to do this knurling tool, it'll come in for other uses. I'm going to give that a try, see where we go. The cutter's not long enough to do the cut in one go, so I'll have to uh, cut it and then plunge down and do it again. But if I get this one wrong, I'm going to be wrong with them all, so I've got to get this one right. So before I started, um, a bit of a problem. The collet chuck is hitting this work holding piece here so I'm going to have to move that to a different position Well, we got it. I'm not saying I won't run a bit of sandpaper just over that. I didn't want to come too far because it'd start marking here. So I'll uh, just rub a bit of wet and dry over that. But no, that's, I think that's bang on. Lovely. So I'll do it on the side. The, this, these are not going to be as easy because. Yeah. It's made a nice cut. It does, it just wants dressing there and there. What I was saying, well, I didn't want to come too far around and start catching here. Uh, it's pretty new to me doing this on a rotary table. It's the first time I've ever used it. So I'm going to dress that carefully. Set this one up and do this one as well. It's, it's not far out though. Not perfect, but it will be.
Tja. Just as another little aside, which I do plenty of, I ordered some uh, blowing solution, uh, and that's how it's come from eBay. That's supposed to be a 250 milliliter bottle, but I suspect there's a few milliliters in that bag. It's wet, came like that with a tie wrap in a box packed with polystyrene. Now, I don't know whether that bottle's burst or whether it's just leaked. I've been in touch with them, but they've not replied yet. They're a fairly big company with a um, hell of a lot of uh, sales. Well, like 25,000. Uh, I'm glad I've got the stuff, but I don't understand what all that's about. Yeah, just a little gripe. to dress that there because that hole is not absolutely bang on from that edge to that edge uh, and it was something to do with this measuring um, so I'm, I will have to dress that one I rubbed that one round and it's not bad uh, so I'll just do that and then I'm going to concentrate on those Just up nicely, then just rub those away. They're, they're on the inside, they're not shown. So, okay, so I'll give it a bit of a clean up and uh, add a go on these, uh, just run sandpaper around them and the faces as well because they were a bit crappy with faces. So, yeah, um, let's have a look, put a light on. Uh, I'm reasonably pleased with it, what I've done.
give that a bit of a rub where them tool marks and that and that one but I'm never going to get all them out I probably end up taking too much material off if I did uh, so I've got to split these now because uh, uh, buh, 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 a one that one is finished that's this outside one yeah that one's completely finished but that one's got to have two holes drilled in it and some more work on that so I can now split these so yeah happy another part made really chuffed so I'm trying to decide what to do next there is this uh, block of steel to do which is the sandwich that goes in between and holds um, these two parts apart like that but <coughs> I think it has to be milled down and it's got to have a shape on it um, shape on it the thing is to clamp that I need to put my vice back on and I've, I've got the um, rotary table on it would seem a shame to take it off to have to put it back on again later so I, I was thinking of maybe leaving some of that might do the curled bit that's to do and move on to something else uh, the next bit is these two pieces and it's for the fingers the arms or whatever you'd like to call them it's for those and there's obviously a, a lot of milling work to do on those and obviously the rotary table is going to be uh, beneficial to use. It tells you the, uh, the drawing calls for these to be put to 4 and 7 sixteenths of an inch which is uh, 4.4375 in thousands. I've faced off that end and there's a little line, I don't know if you can see it from there but there's not much to come off so to do done. We'll take that out and have a look at it. Needs cutting down sideways. Well it's been a, a, a pretty non-productive evening really. Um, we've, we've made that part. So that's the bit. Uh, it just needs cutting down to 510 thou which gives you the 10 thou clearance. And basically goes like that and bolts them together like that but it's too wide it wants to uh, take down to 510 out so <clears throat> it was getting late and I thought I, we don't want to start running the milling machine the garage is fairly soundproof but one of my neighbours did say he heard it one night so I thought it's getting late it's half past 12 at night now so what have I been on with? I'm going to do these fingers next. These jaws. Uh, and I'm a bit disappointed with the drawings, to be quite honest with you, but uh, some of you might say it's me. Um, I'll tell you why. We know that that distance is one inch, the thickness. The, this cutback is 
five eighths of an inch and we know from the centre of that hole the centre of that hole is three and seven eighths inches we know the overall length is four and seven sixteenths inches but it doesn't tell you from the edge of the metal the beginning of it to the centre of that hole what it is so I've gone to great lengths because I know it's 7 sixteenths and I know that the gap all the way, way round is equal so basically on that I've measured half of that and the distance between that is 5 eighths and I've removed that out of it and what we're left I've divided by 2 and that gives me some measurements from the edge of the material. Now, personally, if I were doing a CAD drawing, I would always mark from the edge to every dimension. But they're not. They're just giving you two here and then everything from it, but not to it from the edge. So, some great calculations I've been doing. And that's what I've come up with. So I have marked this piece of metal, you can see it. That's the centre of the hole. That's the cutback. So that wants machining out. Then from there to there is a 3 8 radius. So that's 3 8 of an inch. And that will have to be radiused out on the machine. And obviously the bottom jar is identical in that part, apart from the hole, but the centres are the same. There's just more meat on that, as you can see. So I've marked that out the same. If you can, I don't know if you can see these lines. So they're ready to machine out. I'm calling it hoggling. Then there's this hole to cut, which once I've drilled that and reamed it. To the size I can centre on it and I know to the centre of that one is one and three quarter inches so that ain't a problem and then from that one it gives you a measurement to that one it's all based on this hole here once this hole's done and that's correct you can measure away and then you've got these radiuses that's a three quarters of an inch radius in there so that's got to be set up on the the old uh, rotary table is going to get some use this radius here is one and a half inches. So there's that to do. Then that's got to be rounded. Yeah, it's a fair bit of work. This bit here, I'm a bit baffled with this. So we've got from the centre of that hole to the centre of the pin, one and three quarter inches, I get that. Ream, quarter inch, I get that quarter inch hole there for the uh, nailing wheel, get that, but no particular measurement for it, but we'll have to work that out from this top drawing maybe. Uh, but this, what's this about? From the end of that radius is 1.857 inches to there, what's that? That doesn't mean a thing to me. And three eighths of an inch gap here from here to here. I don't know what that is unless that that is where you'd pivot. You'd go three eighths from that up to there. And but why is it a one point eight five seven measurement? Then a two hundred and thirty thou added to it. I, I don't know what that is. I could see that maybe that's the point where you'd cut your radius. But I don't know what that is. Hmm. Somebody might tell me. Somebody that's good at reading these drawings. Another measurement, half an inch up to there. For what? I really am baffled about that. What all that's about. 
and we'll work it out but if somebody can tell me I'd be happy to know I'm already starting to think that really I should have made this I, I didn't have these drawings that's the problem if I'd have had these drawings I'd have bought all this stock in stainless steel and I made all this in stainless I think it looked a lot well, it looked stunning polished stainless and brass bushes it looked lovely um, but anyway right we're off at night so we'll get on with these tomorrow finish this little block as well